Welcome to Madison City Channel's Know Your Candidates interviews, co-sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Dane County. I'm Joy Cardine, and I'd like to introduce Juliana Bennett, running for Alder from District 8. As we begin, please tell our viewers a bit about how your educational, vocational, and civic experience has prepared you for the position and why you decided to run for Alder. For sure. Um, first off, thank you so much, Joy and uh, the League of Women Voters of Dane County and all those tuning in and engaging in our local government. So um, as we begin chatting about, um, well, I would like to start with like why I decided to run. Um, just a little bit about me. I come from a working class family in the suburbs of Illinois, uh, where my dad was um, a retired veteran and small business owner. And my mom was a registered nurse who was the kindest human being you'd ever meet. And together they taught me the values of um, hard work, resilience, and just pushing to ensure, um, to uplift the community. Um, so I came to UW-Madison holding these values um, and graduated from uh, Madison West High School with honors um, with the with the values of like looking um, to looking to build community and looking to um, honestly just see the many opportunities in Madison and while I've um, done so and like had um, had made amazing lifelong friends some of whom started off in my dorm room and celery um, to now I've also seen the dark underbelly of Madison where we see that underside of experiencing <clears throat> um, financial instability, housing insecurity, and just the added pressure of being a person of color um, on, um, on this campus and in the city. So um, the, having in, um, the experience of being one of the co-founders of the UW Madison BIPOC Coalition, um, we've we're working for the um, upliftment and coalescing the voice of BIPOC students on campus, and in this working across channels with um, the Associate Students of Madison, um, with City Council in these budget hearings, um, and ultimately um, looking to see a real progressive change in Madison. What issue or issues have you identified as being a primary concern to the residents of your district and how would you approach tackling them? Certainly, so um, there are a number of issues, um, three main issues to start off with, right? So in District 8, um, this is a primarily student-based constituency. We face issues of affordable housing, um, the reimagining public safety in, um, in our city and sustainability. So for each of these um, levers, I will tackle these through an intersectionality lens of looking how um, factors such as affordable housing and having um, homes in which we have, we have the funding for the homes and also um, proper homes that are, are, are livable and, and how that intersects with areas such as sustainability um, in which um, in many dorm or in many apartment buildings, there isn't proper recycling or composting happening. So um, I will tackle those issues um, in that sort of intersectionality lens and looking to um, bridge the gap between the movement on the street um, into city council with um, the Black Lives Matter movement and, and meeting community demands for um, social justice, equity and inclusion. There will be an advisory referendum on the ballot in April about a number of modifications to the Common Council, including changing the number of members, making it full time, and changing the term of office. Which of the ideas being advanced do you embrace and why or why not? Certainly, so in tackling this question, I kind of wanna start off with how I understand um, the need to the need to or the thoughts of changing the current referendum of, of city council um, so to ensure that council members are being paid a livable wage and also being able to do their job efficiently and effectively. 
However, from my point of view as a student, um, changing the position to full time and lowering the amount of alders um, significantly reduces the amount of um, youth and student pop student participation in local government in which by definition a full-time student could not take on the role of a full-time alder as well um, therefore i um complete i completely believe that the position of alder should remain part-time however we should double the wage um, that we're currently offering alders and um i also believe that we should maintain the terms of two years um, instead of the current proposal of four years. Ultimately, I believe that um, changing the structure, um, it has some benefits, but it has some real and significant costs where it significantly reduces who can be an alder, who can run to be an alder, um, just due to the equity factors of how much it costs. Homelessness, evictions, and lack of affordable housing are vexing problems for Madison that seem to have been exacerbated in the time of COVID-19. What ideas would you advance or support to help solve these problems? Certainly. So this is um, a huge, huge problem um, that we're facing in Madison right now with the eviction moratorium. I think it's um, quite interesting how um, in terms of affordable housing and homelessness, we have we face a very unique issue um, in District 8 um, because it is primarily student based population. Therefore, we face um, a decision often between a home that is overly bougie, overpriced and um, just unattainable um, or an option that is um, less expensive, but is broken down and falling apart. So um, I would like to like face both of these issues and looking at um, ways in which we can reduce the cost for um, luxury apartments through um, grant for, through <laughs> getting um, funding for affordable housing and working with um, Jeff Novak, the university housing director and um, other luxury apartment um, developers in Madison in order to lower the price of luxury housing. Um, on the flip hand side of that, I intend to connect students with um, city building inspectors to ensure that their apartments are um, safe and livable, their heating is working, there aren't um, rodents in the house, um, just so that we have a wonderful experience while living in Madison, I hope. Um, these two ways will bridge the gap of affordable housing. Um, in terms of the homelessness issue, I certainly believe that it's honestly wild that there's anyone on the streets in Madison right now because um, why, why are there? Why are there 850 people right now that are without homes in Madison? Why are there 20,000 people in Madison that could, could be without homes with one financial um, mistake? And um, as as older, it will be my priority to ensure that every single person has a home and has a livable and safe and wonderful experience while living in Madison. With the selection of a new police chief and the creation of a community oversight board, there's a lot of attention focused on policing and criminal justice, both from the perspective of racial equity and law enforcement and the concern that many citizens have that in fact crime, especially car thefts and home burglaries is increasing and that police response is inadequate. How would you deal with these concerns? Certainly, so um, I started off this kind of journey with civic engagement um, with the Black Lives Matter movement. And in looking at these, there's calls um, for many people to um, defund the police, but and on the flip hand side of that, um, the flip hand side to defunding the police is refunding the community. Um, and I think in tackling these issues of racial justice and equity, we also be needing to look at that intersectionality lens of how um, inequity, how poverty, um, how leads to um, leads to crime and how um, 
when we're saying reimagine public safety, public safety is also education. Public safety is also employment. Public safety is also um, having a home. So um, I will certainly look at it through a lens of refunding the community to tackle the root cause issues of public safety in Madison. Uh, furthermore, in terms of the new police chief, um, I'm honestly quite excited to build a connection or um, between like the, the movement and um, activists and within city council um, and ensure like being very stern and blunt about the current um, lack of trust between um, policing that we face right now. I also hope to um, be appointed to the Public Safety Review Committee in order to review um, public safety, uh, the public safety structure in Madison in order to ensure the um, oversight of Madison. Um, along the side of community, the community oversight board, I intend to um, meet the o OIR report um, recommendation number 144 to have an independent monitor that is free of any political influence from anyone. Because at the end of the day, the community deserves and knows what's best for us. Madison businesses of all kinds have been severely stressed in the past year. What, if anything, would you propose to support business revitalization? Sure. So I feel like I, I feel so deep with this question because, um, as I alluded to before, my dad owned a small business restaurant called Bamboo Sugar Barbecue. And when I, when my dad um, came down with congestive heart failure, I was 15 at the time and faced the decision to let the business close or manage the business myself. And I decided to do so, but I couldn't do that without the support of the community. And this, um, this situation, although it was like five years ago, taught me how uh, when the community comes together to um, help each other and help our small businesses, that's when we have a thriving um, business and economy. And we need to have the same thing in Madison in which we are um, supporting our supporting our small businesses, encouraging um, the city to provide resources, um, to provide um, knowledge and education for our small businesses to um, thrive, especially during this time. Additionally, I think that um, just looking at the District 8 area, knowing it's so close to downtown, we're facing um, a unique problem, which, which it's kind of, we're facing a unique problem where we're trying to rebuild State Street and rebuild that downtown area. Um, and in doing so, I would love to look at it through a lens of um, diversity to um, create a more diversity in entertainment and diversity in shops um, and small businesses in the downtown area. What measures should Madison take to increase our city's environmental sustainability? Mm. So currently we in Madison, we have the plan to reach um, to reach 100% renewable energy by 2030. And we must ensure that we are doing so right now. We need to make those measures um, to meet it at least by 2030, if not sooner. So I certainly plan to work um, with Sustainable Madison and environmental majors at, um, at the university to um, bring innovative ideas to Madison. Um, in, in doing so, I will certainly look at, um, honestly, just simple solutions that make a huge difference, such as working with developers to stop runoff from going into our lakes, ensuring um, proper leaf and snow removal to um, reduce salt, to reduce salt usage and um, the salt usage going into our lakes, which um, damage our lakes. Furthermore, um, as alluded to before, I'm certainly looking at um, increasing our, increasing and ensuring that all of our buildings and apartments are following the codes of recycling and adding a community compost bin that will be available to um, all neighbor 
all neighborhoods um, in apartment buildings. Lastly, um, I will uh, work to encourage um, small businesses, especially those in the downtown area to um, use, to use um, reusable bags, such reusable bags, such as paper bags or um, just the reusable bags to ensure that um, we are being very thoughtful and mindful of our carbon footprint in Madison. Um, what would you like to say to the viewing audience as we complete this interview? Certainly. Well, once again, thank you so much to the League of Women Voters of Dane County and those um, that are participating in our democracy right now. Um, we are facing a tremendous time in our history in which we are, we are facing a time where we can think critically about the systems that we have had in place and the history behind these, uh, behind what has brought us here in Madison, and um, shift to a world in which we can build a coalition of young, civically engaged people that will um, want to engage in our local government, want to engage in our city, in our county, um, and on our campus. And I encourage all of you to take a moment and just check out our local governments. Additionally, um, I know that at the end of the day, I certainly hope to um, be your older and I, I promise to not only represent, but also amplify and include all voices to ensure that we are heard, recognized and respected. Um, my vision for this is um, for a, my vision for this race is to build a Madison where people of all backgrounds can come here and want to stay here um, and find a place that is diverse, welcoming, and inclusive, a place that you can call Madison home. Thank you, Juliana Bennett, for speaking with us and to the viewing audience for taking the time to know your candidates. As with every election, please vote. On behalf of the Madison City Channel and the League of Women Voters of Dane County, thank you for joining us.